Hey guys, Sam here with Scrappy Industries. Welcome back to the Little Mac A40 project, also known as the Mini Mac. I bought this truck with a 5.9 Cummins already in it. This is an early 24 valve that has the VP44 rotary pump. Started out by getting this engine running. It had never run in this chassis when I bought it, and it still had an Allison four-speed transmission behind it. So I decided to get rid of that Allison transmission. That was one of the videos and go back to the duplex Mac transmission. So follow along in this video as we get the duplex transmission along with our new clutch and flywheel installed. It's been a little bit of delay here because the weather was so nice. We had a lot of summertime outdoor projects, but now that the weather's getting a little crappier, we're back in the shop working on the A40. We're experimenting with longer, more consistent clip lengths. If you like that, or if you like the shorter format of just chopping everything down real fast, please comment below, let us know your thoughts. Just wanna to try to make the most enjoyable videos we can. At the end of the day, we're here for your entertainment. This truck is a 1953. It was truck number 52 to the Bryan Company, where it was bought new, worked in the Pittsburgh area all its life. The Lorraine 820 and my cousin's Bay City 45 are both also ex Brian machines. My grandfather was best friends with Bobby Brian. That's how he ended up with the Lorraine in the Bay City. I bought this because a friend of mine told me about it, that it was for sale, and I thought, hey, that's awesome. Goes with the rest of the fleet. My intentions are to turn this truck into a service truck. I have a service bed with a electric over hydraulic crane on it. That's what I plan on putting on the back of it. I would also like to convert from spring ride to air ride. So in upcoming videos, you're gonna to get to see some of that. So let's get into it. All right, dug the gear shifts out of our spare parts area here and figured out this one only moves front and back. It's the splitter. This one will move all directions. It's the main shifter. It's kind of temporarily screwing them down. With the same 3 8 bolt as the cover evidently. Have to grab some more of those out of the bin. But I just want to see kind of what we got. So this is the, must be the low hole and reverse side. Yeah, it's granny low. That's direct, but I kind of want to see here if it's an overdrive or direct fifth. So basically the splitter over here you have, yeah, so faster is back, which is direct, and then under drive, I'm not sure what ratio is there. So basically this gives you 10 gears. So that's like first gear on the five speed, low split. So that would be like the lowest possible gear. That'd be the next gear. Then you go up out of first into second. But then you you can split down and then take the higher gear. Pull this back, split up. It's the two-handed shifting package. Next gear. It's gonna be a sweet transmission. So I have a paint stick here. I'm just gonna put the yoke here, mark the top, and mark the top on the pilot. You gotta turn. That's a full turn on the front. You get about one and a quarter turns on the output shaft. So I guess that means you're getting like a 25% overdrive. So one divided by 1.25 equals 0.8. So I think that's our, that's our ratio there is a 0.8 overdrive, which is definitely helpful. The ratio 
rear end in this truck is 7.22, I think. So I'm trying to get a faster rear end because even with a 0.8 overdrive, it's gonna be ridiculously slow. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna try to come up with like a four and a quarter or a 450 rear. We got 10 gears, so I'm not afraid to let it run a little bit. Have a faster ratio and not have to run wide open. It's not like we're gonna be hauling heavy. It's gonna have a service body on it, so. I'm happy that this is overdrive though. I thought this was gonna be direct, so that's awesome. Good deal. Hey, do not eat a Pig Mac, boys. No, leave it, leave it. No, no, no. So another interesting thing I'm finding here is that the clutch pedal, which previous owner gave me all these parts, I'm sure glad he didn't scrap them. I thought this was gonna bolt to the frame, was kind of my assumption, but the only place I can find that it would go is right on the transmission, which I've just never seen anything like that. It seems like it matches up just Jim Dandy with those bolt holes and there's nowhere on the frame where it would go and the linkage even matches right here. So it pretty well has to go there. Just thought that was interesting that more or less, you know, the clutch pedal, it's gonna end up right on there. But as you're pushing the clutch pedal, you're gonna feel the slight twist of the engine and transmission there as you're pulling out or whatever. But I was gonna chase these threads. <laughs> Goes all the way into the bell housing, man. Nice and easy. <laughs> like the one inch bolts are what we wanna go with. That's kinda wanna. Slap this up here for the time being, anyway, just to kind of check everything out. Evidently, that's where it belongs, because what are the odds that everything just lines up? So that would hook here on our fork. I assume there was some sort of a, like a tab on one of these bell housing bolts for this spring to be your clutch return spring. And this does have a key on it. I'm going to get killed by these goofballs. And it goes like that. This sets your, your back setting, your backstop. But that's easy then. I thought we were going to have to add all this linkage into the truck. That's awesome. It has taken us most of the summer to come up with the correct clutch and flywheel. But I think we have the right clutch and flywheel. We're gonna go ahead and try to install it and see if we actually have the correct clutch and flywheel. So the challenging part about finding the right clutch and flywheel for this truck was it is an SAE 3 bell housing on the back of this Cummins. It seems like a lot of them are SAE 2 and of course your regular Dodge Cummins style automotive clutch and flywheel are readily available. I think that the SAE3s were obviously in certain school buses, other industrial applications, and getting the, I think we ended up with a 12 inch clutch. Don't quote me on that. Whatever clutch bolts to this flywheel and has the right bolt pattern for one of these holes, as our pressure plate now does, that was tough to find. It has the 10 spline input shaft that we needed for the original Mac transmission. We also got a, I think this is a GM style throttle bearing, Ford GM something. I'm not sure exactly where we're gonna be with this. This one comes off, this one fits it in and all that jazz, but it's a little bit different where the fingers hit. I think if nothing else, we can tap this bearing off and just replace the bearing on this casting this guy 
from what I can tell, those diameters are the same. But for now, let's mount the flywheel on the crankshaft and make sure that the starter lines up. Go. Hi, buddy. Hopefully the last guy changed the rear main seal. Surely he didn't take the rear main seal out of the old bell housing and put it in this one. I think we got off to the races over there with the boys. Oh. Now, now, kids. This guy says flywheel bolts, 101 foot pounds. Pressure plate, 17. Ow! I'm gonna probably need like a little bar to lift this up. Okay, I'll be right back. Is that a dry torque, I guess? I assume so. And there are no washers? I don't, in that kit thingy? I can go look. I'm not seeing any. Well, you know what? They used that ring thing on the old one. Wonder if we could, if we should use that. Um, looks like a good looks like a good quality washer to me. Yeah, I think it'll that be is a Cummins. That is a real washer. I think once we just snug these up in here one time, we ought to sling the starter back in and check that on for size. an impact so we can speed our life up a little bit here. Here's that little M12 one would be just Jim Dandy. Okay. Can't hurt much for that. This is just the little baby one. And what are we going with for torque, Big John? I believe 102. Let me just double check. 102 it is, right, Yogel? Can this engine take 102 without turning? Nope. Let's get rid of this extension. Can you give me a deep 19, please? Yep. Here you go. Can you hold this through the starter hole or something so I don't have to do it? I wonder if you're not supposed to run this in with a dial indicator. That's what you have to do on the big cam. Just okay. to check run out? Yeah, you have to set it and then tighten them down and it's somehow supposed to magically stay. We could put the dial indicator on that bore and turn it over. Um, you want to sling the starter in there once, even if you just hold it in there? It could go in there now. It had to be off for me to take the flex, bolt, flex plate bolts out. The torque converter bolts, I guess. It was measurable. All right, here we go. Oh, we got other flanges of bolts there. There we go. I mean, it was in, so. Yep, there it is. Okay, it's not hitting it currently. I can pull this in, maybe. There it is. Wait a minute. Is that where you want it? Yeah. Now it's fully seated. I think it would go. So there the gear is engaged. We still have a little bit of backlash. Okay, if you wiggle it'll probably jump back. All seems well with that starter to me. I'm trying to get the actual 
throw out bearing off of the new setup without destroying it. We're gonna tell ourselves we're not destroying it. It'll be fine. Maybe now we can pry that off. Might do more damage. Yeah, how about hammering? That's gotta go, I think the whole way, half inch more? Almost there. Surely they wouldn't make it this tight the whole way. Another thing we could do is put a socket in that fits that. Like this one you happen to have out. Kinda. Save money. Buy an N2012. If it's the same one, that is. This guy is not real happy about life. And like barely turns. Not to say you couldn't spend all day under the parts washer maybe. I wonder if we just put it in the vise with the next size bigger socket there. Let that stay a little bit loose. Oh yeah, that's the way to go. And let's see if the new one fits it. It's like not tight, but not loose. I mean, like it doesn't wiggle, so. I just don't know, is it gonna like fall off? Hmm. I don't feel like that's very right. Can we measure the old part, new part? See what they spec out at? Specs out that this one's tighter. You know what it does kind of go on. Maybe it just needs a little peening. See, it's just like it can be hanging there and then like fall off. <laughs> but while it's being pushed against it, it's gonna do throw out bearing things. I'm gonna clean this up first. Fire squasher got a lot of use since he bought it. Yeah, it is. It was a good eBay guy to find, even if it wasn't bought on eBay. That's cool, look at the old Mac logo. It's cast into that. I don't, I don't think the new ones will have that on there. Now that it's cleaned up, you can see it's almost like fret on there a little bit. And I'm wondering if that's why it's a little bit loose. And I have a feeling that's why they're trying to sell you all of this in a, in a kit so that you're fixing that wear. There's a little bit of wear where the fingers hit this whenever, every time you push the clutch down. So by replacing this whole little casting, you're fixing all those problems in one go. But we're not looking to get a million miles out of this truck, so it's gonna be okay. So what I'm doing here is putting a couple punch marks in the OD of that surface where this bearing needs to ride. And what we're doing is essentially screwing that up so that it should get tighter. If you don't put it on backwards. So this should get tighter. And it is tighter, but I need to do a little bit more of that. Eh, it's really not too bad. I'm gonna hit it a couple more times, tap this on, and that should hold it where we need it to be.
Now she's seated on there nice and tight, not going anywhere. So this guy slips on the front of the transmission here. Whenever you push the clutch pedal down, you're pushing in on that, which pushes in on the forks on the pressure plate, which releases the clutch. The newer ones, they have a grease fitting on here and you reach up through from this access cover in the bottom and grease it every now and then. This one apparently is previous to those design changes. So we're gonna clean this up and give it like a lifetime greasing apparently. Get that cleaned up, that goes on. There's this little return spring here, which just holds it out of the clutch while you're running. Keeps all that back. And this is, I guess, ready to go on. Give it a quick little cleanup. Go! I'm trying to keep that grease off these splines because I don't want it to zing out onto the clutch. And let's clean up this flange. I've never seen a scraper like that where it's just flat. Just flat carbine? Yep. Does a real nice job. If you don't want to spring for the snap on one because you're cheap like me, you can buy this one on Amazon. This transmission just kind of sat outside for a while at that guy's garage. So I think that's where a lot of the crusty rusties came from. You see how good of a job that carbide scraper does. It literally makes shiny metal out of that, just running it across there. So I'm, I'm impressed with them. And I guess we're ready to try to put this in. So what I'm trying to do now is basically I want to do a little sanity check on the run out of the flywheel before we commit to all this. So I have this dial indicator. I'm going to rig up over here on this motor mount. Hopefully be able to reach right in here to where the pilot bearing goes. Maybe I can get this lean back enough to where all you fine folks can see it. I don't know what a spec would be on this. I guess I would want to see it within a couple thousandths. What do you think, Engineer Big John? I'm thinking 2,000 is probably all you want. 2,000 is all you want, he says. Hopefully we're not going to retorque this. Oh, they're off to there. Well, you know what? It's funny. You see, the, you see the pull in the bearings, I guess, as we do this. Oh, we're already minus one and a half. So we're like a total of three thousandths out. We're like plus or minus one and a half. Yeah, we're going to send it. The other thing we can do is check how out of flat we are this way. Again, don't know what we could ever do about it, but it's kind of cool to know. Jimmy in the comments is going to tell us how this is totally wrong and you should never put it together like this and it's never going to run and they might be right but I can tell you it's going to go together and if it needs to come back apart it'll come back apart. <laughs> Looking pretty flat that way. The other thing we could do is put a bar and see what our thrust end play is. That's about as flat as you could ask for though. So I don't think any issue there. You got a bar, Big John, you could put in the starter hole maybe and push outwards on it. If I reposition this kind of in the middle, then we won't see any flex in the flywheel. We will instead just see what kind of end play we have in that crankshaft, get a little idea of the thrust bearings. Yeah, all right, hold that. Holding. Okay. Um... Set that to zero. Okay, let her off. I'm off. Oh, man. Yeah, that's like a, that's like a good 12, 13 thou of end play. Is that good? Seems like a lot. Maybe, maybe we'll give that a Google and see if that's all right. Do, 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 do. Well, a quick Google later. And the thrust spec is four thousandths to 17 thousandths, so. 12 or 13 thousandths is just golden. Next is to install the pilot bearing in a nice crude fashion. Get it started. D 
Do you think that pilot needs to go in all the ways? What's that say, Big John? Pressure plate side. Okay, they made it easy on us. I got plenty of clearance on the back side. I'm used to the E9 troubles where I had to literally mill this whole thing bigger for the heavier clutch circle and shave off the bolt heads and turn up the horsepower. And it stayed glued together so far. Need to clean off this side of the pressure plate, get any of the dirt off of there. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. This is definitely as big of a clutch as you're going to fit in this bell housing. It's using her all. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So we had to replace one bolt that fell out of the set, so we're going to replace two that are opposite each other. That way, whatever differences there are in these heads, these are the same bolt. So that will keep her in balance as best we can. If it's a 3 8 bolt, it's 33. If it's a 7 16 bolt, it's 50. How about 44, John? Sounds good to me. Going 44 foot-pound on these, we seem to find varying results on the internet. That's just what I found under a straight 3 8 bolt grade 8 torque spec. Alrighty. It's 11 o'clock. It's time for bed. Since you guys remember how well taking the Allison out with this jack went, we're going to put this one in with this jack too. I wonder if we ought to uh, probably move that pallet out of the way because we're going to want the jack handle straight back and, and come under it. Let's see if we can get the sketchiness rigged up first. Oh yeah, we also we need to put it in gear, in a high gear. So we can turn the yoke and turn the input shaft. There we go. There we go. I don't think that's going to work. I think we're bailing out of that. Crap. Without that step on there, we could almost reach under with a forklift, but then we'd only have side shift slash drag it on the forks, maybe? You'd almost have to split this and get this to go in like past the cylinder. Well, even if it was at the end of the forks, it may go 48 inches. You know what that exhaust is gonna be in the way too. We need a transmission jack. All right, so doing a little more brainstorming, I think I have an idea. If we shove this underneath the truck, put the jib pole on the forklift, we can actually reach in the door here, put a strap down through the floorboard, and then lift the transmission from in the cab, I'm thinking. Center of gravity should be roughly 14 inches back from the bell housing on the transmission. That puts us with the strap about right here. So if we do that, pick up, and then come over a little bit, even if we have to just push it over or swing it on it. I think that will work. Plus that'll give us, if it's hanging, we got a little leeway to be underneath it, like shaking the transmission and get it on. I think it's the best chance we have. Let's set it up. Yeah. 
I just think we probably ought to put like a shackle to pinch it so that it's less likely to flip out of it. Can you grab one off that vid more, please? Should be able to reach right in here with the jib pole now and hook this and lift it. Oh, it's not hurt that. How far can I go? Uh, you got like three more inches before this fork hits. Oh, uh, hold up. We can just tell you that. We can okay. slide that out. All right. Right there, you're at the steering wheel. I wonder if we back up a little bit, and slide out of here more, that way we have clearance clearing. We can call that good. So we're fighting for height in here the way that this is all rigged up. So I eliminated the hook out of the equation. We'll just hook the strap directly on there and we're ready to try to pick it. Is it picking level or what do we got? Uh, keep going up a little bit more. Are we all right on the steering wheel? Yeah, we're right there, but I think we're good. All right, I guess, I guess we're all right. I don't know if we're gonna have enough height for this, but we're gonna find out. So it looks like we don't have enough height. We need about 19 more inches here and we don't have that. So I'm thinking if we lift up what we can, set it on some crib locks. I think these loops will just loop right over the end of the jib pole. And that'll give us that much more height. And hopefully that'll work. I don't think we want to try to do that now because we'd have to wiggle in down here. So pick it up, put it on crib locks, set it down, rehook. Catch that flange. Yep. I think it's kind of free enough that we have. The nice thing about being hanging there is you can like shove it around. Yep. You want to come over here and take a look? We might be able to get it to go now. We have side chips available also. Which I'm tilted pretty far back, actually. You want to go jump on the forklift? Yeah. Looks like we need to go up. Can we not go up yet? Yeah, we still need to go up more. Oh, Sorry, okay. I was looking at the front end. I didn't realize how tip back it was. Do you have any bolts at all, or I guess the shaft will hold it? Yeah, we do somewhere. Actually, hold on a second. Okay. Yeah, go up. Up. 
Up. All right. Can you side shift to the right? Yep. Man, I wish we could come in more. Right now, the transmission is tipped way back. Way back? Yeah. All right, well, if you go up, I think I'm actually started into the clutch now, right? Yeah. Going up. All right, good up. All right. Oh. Something happened. I feel like it's in. Oh, it's definitely in. We're not into the pilot bearing yet, I don't think. Oh, maybe now we are. Well, the main problem is it's rolled to the right. Okay. We might, you might bring the floor jack and just pick up right here a little bit. It's like we need to like get that thing to slip in the strap a little bit. Even if you put a bar maybe from the top, can you get it hooked in one of those shifter holes or something and then just pry it over? I can't even see a bolt hole right now. Like that? Yeah, uh, yeah, keep going. Oh, there's a hole, like a half a hole, a little more. If you can hold it all the way, we could get a bolt in it. I mean, I got a little bit more hold I on. could give. Then hold on. We're in through the clutch plate and the pilot bearing right now. I'm trying to get it twisted and get a couple bolts started. How's that? You know what we didn't ever check? These metric bolts won't fit through here. I don't think. <laughs> well, that one will. I think we need to take this off and drill these holes. Dang it. So this Cummins newer bell housing has metric bolts whereas the transmission was on one that had standard bolts so even though the holes line up the holes on this transmission aren't quite as big i feel like we'd save ourselves some grief if we just bit the bullet and took it back off because then we could just punch through there with the next size drill bit real fast and not worry about hitting the aluminum round two we do it right because we do it twice too much power You can't get there from here. Ah. Can we keep spinning? Can you push on that block? With the middle one? Push on this block right here. Yep. No, I guess it's not doing much. Oh, my fingers. All right. Let's not forget Mr. Throwout. That hopefully is in the right place. So this thing does actually go pretty far past lined up with the bell. It's just when you adjust the clutch pedal, it's gonna be somewhere in that vector. This jack screw here is how you adjust the clutch. Basically all you're doing is taking up the wear by moving where that throwout bearing is. There's no adjustment on these style clutches, not like a big truck where you have to get in there and turn the little cap screw bolt adjuster thingamabob from up underneath. So that's nice. Gonna clean this up. Head down. All right, stop. We're gonna try to pre-caulk this thing to the right. All right, try that. Go ahead, raise her up. Going up. Hold up. Oh, 
how much clearance the old steering wheel. But you know what they say, clearance is clearance. Going up. All right. Please stay. It's not happy, Bob. Looks like we preloaded it this way way too much. It needs to go the other way. You need to push the top away from you. Yep. Yep, a little bit. I can't see the bolt holes. Yeah, you got one. More of it. More. That one started. Where is that this is another one? one. And then all the other ones are behind on the under the tire behind your head. All right. So where are you at on this journey, Sam? So we have this clutch pedal linkage. It bolts on the side of the transmission. The clutch pedal directly hangs on that. These airlines seem to be kind of in the way. I'm not sure how the transmission shifts it around. We also have the gear shifts go up here. So the throttle may need to move. So right now we're going to get this floorboard out of the way. Definitely should have done that first. <laughs> Why? See, can you see the transmission now? We have all the access now. <laughs> Pull these brake valves kind of over. I've started to take that off too. I'm going to bail out on that. Tighten that back down before I forget all about it. Then we'll get this clutch pedal-ish linkage mounted up because obviously we can't do much about that. So everything else is going to have to base on where that is and where the clutch pedal ends up. So let's try that and see where we land. I can't. I think the Cummins in the transmission definitely moved forward a little bit. That would want to be as terribly far up as I thought. It's like you're going to be riding the steering column now with your foot though. I guess we need to try to unhook these lines. I think they're going to almost have to become flexible lines because they got to clear this clutch dealio in a slightly different location now. I do think the the mounting of the Cummins must have moved forward a little bit from what the Mac gas job he had the transmission sitting at. All right, let's push the clutch pedal down and see if she turns. There we go. Hey! Free spin. Let her up. Oh, and that's it. Sweet. We have a clutch pedal. Let's get the starter hooked back up. I just put it back in. The only reason I had it out was if you recall, that's how the torque converter bolts came out. You had to remove that starter and then one at a time take those torque converter bolts out. That was probably the hardest part of the transmission delete. Get our down pipe at least jammed on there. fresh new battery mounted in here. Hopefully it's a little better than our previous battery. And we need, of course, the all-important diesel gas. Oh, there's some diesel gas. Got a wheel. Now she's all bled and happy. Let's see what she does.
works, the clutch works. I was a little nervous, so I'm happy about that. What do you think, Yogel? When I push it in, it stops, because I started thinking, hey, this thing doesn't even have a clutch brake, which maybe it's because the oil's cold. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't become a problem, but yeah, there's no typical clutch brake like you'd have on a big truck. So all in all, I'm happy with it. Can't really float gears yet with no weight behind it, but I'm sure we'll be floating this thing with that five speed. The duplex on this is like an off-road shift from what I can tell. It's not like a true splitter. I think you're going to end up just driving like a five speed. And if you need real low gears, you can put it in the low side on the splitter itself. So I think that's how we're going to run her. Thanks for watching this episode of the Mini Mac. Stay tuned for the next time when we'll be swapping out the spring suspension for air ride and then getting ready to sandblast and paint the frame and put the service bed on the back. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.